Nancy's contributions to engineering go beyond her role at work and into the world of professional engineering societies that help make the safety and logical standards of all things technical. If you go back to the origins of the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, it was probably back in the 1870s and the motivation was uh, the country is pretty much powered by steam. In the beginning of the steam age, there was no uh, codes and standards for piping design, for boiler design. So uh, originally the ASME developed the codes and standards. We are applied physicists, so we deal with Newton's world primarily, although there are some mechanical engineers that work at the subatomic level. Um, so Newton's laws of motion are really important to us. Um, mechanisms, uh, physical objects uh, with movement, you know, static, dy dynamic movement. We're a global society and we promote the art uh, and science of mechanical engineering. Nancy holds many chair positions at the organization and started the PR segment in Washington, D.C. After fulfilling a great diversity of roles in the ASME, she is made a candidate for president. And amazingly, I never thought it would happen. You know, I didn't think we were quite out of the dark ages yet. And Roland uh, said, did I, did I want him to go? And I said, no, 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 it's off. I'm really flattered that they've asked me to be a candidate, but that I'm never going to make it. Don't bother to come. And he wasn't there. <laughs> so he wasn't even there when it happened. Nancy becomes the first woman president of the ASME from 1986 to 87. Nancy worked on revitalizing the ASME at a critical time. She established a strong link between industry leaders by setting up five councils to coordinate activities of common interest. The ASME has remained strong ever since that time.